Roxo Media House. Hey Frog fans, welcome inside the Flying Tea Club studio here at Roxo Media House. I'm Josh Hoover. And I'm Chase Curtis with the TCU football team. Thank you for always supporting our football team and we look forward to seeing you at the Carter next season. We're also excited to host this edition of Frogs Today. In today's show, we announced some exciting news for the TCU football program. Plus, we recap the women's basketball game. Players from the volleyball team get exciting recognition after a hard-fought season, and our men's basketball team continues to start the season off strong. Today's show starts after a quick word from one of our sponsors. Stay, Stay tuned. tuned. In Botham, we put people first. So, we simply start by listening to you. Whether you're searching for customized insurance, HR, or financial solutions to protect your home, car, health, business, or employees, our specialists are here to serve you, the people you care about, and your success. Higginbotham, insurance, HR, and financial services, inspired by you. Welcome back inside the Flying Tea Club studio. I'm your host, Josh Hoover. News broke this week about a coaching change on the TCU defense. Our defense coordinator, Joe Gillespie, was let go after two seasons with our program. His defense was a pivotal reason why we played for the NAS championship last year. His former players are grateful for the time he spent pouring into them. I'd have to say, you know, he was real important in my growth, you know, even just important just for me being here at TCU because, you know, I was new with him when he got here to TCU. And I was safety my first year, and then it was his decision to have me come into his room for linebacker this most recent year. So I feel like he's had, always had a good vision for me. One of the best for sure. Uh, you know, I appreciate him for everything he's done for me. Uh, I thank him for actually picking TCU because of the fact that, uh, you know, things could have been different. And I feel like he helped in uh, certain engagements, so I feel like he helped us do everything. I'd like to say, like, all the players still feel, you know, good about Coach Gillespie, and, you know, we still wish he was here and stuff. It was just... You know, the coach made a decision, so I feel like we just have to stand behind him. Pretty much, uh, he helped me grow as a man, like different things I couldn't overcome. He helped me overcome them. Uh, so, like, he picked me up when I was down, and that helped me grow as a man. Frogs today was among the first to report that Andy Avalos will be joining Coach Dyke's staff as the new defense coordinator. Avalos was most recently the head coach at Boise State. He spent three seasons with the Broncos. He also served as defense coordinator at Oregon, where he helped the Ducks win back-to-back -back Pac-12 championships. Uh, there's going to be a lot of new changes in the defense and stuff. So I feel like that's going to be good. It's going to get like put other people in the defense in better positions to make plays. So I feel like that should just be a good look. And then overall, we're like we're like allowed to change a lot of different things and just show teams different looks. So just depending on who we play, we can line up in different stuff. Oh uh, yeah, you know we're ready to go to work. Even though you know uh, it happens in the NFL every day, uh, we you go through different through different D coordinators, different head coaches, different things like that. So, you know, we just prepare for it. So uh, I'm ready for next season, you know, get, get going with the new D coordinator, see what we can do. You know, I felt like I've been here for two years. I've been a high year and a low year. So I feel like I kind of know what it takes to get to the high years. So I feel like just that off season work and off season training that we need to do to get back to where we need to be. Yeah, we ready to get going, you know, picked up what we left off at, you know, try to try to be better than what we was last year for sure. We look forward to welcoming Coach Avalos on campus soon. Meanwhile, three seniors on our football team are being honored for their hard work. TCU offensive lineman Brandon Coleman, cornerback Josh Newton, and tight end Jerry Wiley have accepted the invitation to play in the Reese's Senior Bowl. Yeah, I mean, I think every college player kind of that's their goal, especially for the stepping stone is for the draft to get invited to one of these bowl games, especially um, the Reese's Senior Bowl. You know, all the talent that's been there, the legacy it's ha it has for these players to kind of give them a, a jump start on getting to talk to these coaches, getting to perform, compete against the best athletes in football in the nation. Um, it's exciting to be, I'm honored to be able to get invited to that and compete. I mean, yeah, preparation is going to be uh, hard, especially these next couple of weeks, but that's what it takes to prepare for a, a big game like that, the practices, and yeah, I'm excited. I'll be training in Frisco uh, with you, Willis Patrick <clears throat> and Andrew Coker. We'll be up there at Sports Academy training. And it'll be a long deal, six days a week, stuff like that. Just preparing for football, watching film, um, getting better in the weight room, but also working on our technique. Um, and yes, yeah, it's, it's rigorous, hard work, but this is the best of the best out there. And we'll be able to train with guys that are also invited to the Reese Senior Bowl. Other old linemen um, get to compete with them in training and prepare. So it'll be, it'll be a good time. Give this to all the people around me. I mean, my teammates, my coaches, uh, family members, friends, everybody kind of gave me a chance and sacrificed a lot for me to be here. Um, they believed in me as a captain and, and, you know, that's not just me doing that, but my teammates also seeing something in me that I might've done to, uh, give them kind of that look of a captain, which is great. 
and yeah, my coaches and, and teammates just pushing me every day in practice, teaching me everything I, I learned, especially Steve, uh, still ask him. I even call him now just for, you know, upcoming draft stuff. He's been there last year and trained in the same place, went to the same senior bowl and uh, asked him for advice. And he told me um, right after last year is just don't make it bigger than it is. You know, a lot of guys go in like those senior bowls with like really big heads and or not big heads, but like just great expectations for themselves and get nervous. Um, but he says treat like a practice and just perform to your ability. Um, and with training, I mean, just prepare the most you can. Get in the film room is what he told me. Get to learn, you know, defense coverages, um, learn plays, know how to draw them up. That stuff's very important at the next level and just be smart with your football IQ. They will be playing on February 3rd in Alabama. Good luck. We'll be right back. Energy does everything for us. It's all-encompassing. We're all benefiting and affected from it. And it is something that we all need to know about. It is the glue that holds everything together. TCU is powering what matters, our future. We don't just talk about what's needed. We focus on results. The Ralph Lowe Energy Institute is creating a world where energy is affordable, sustainable, and reliable. Simply the best barbecue in Fort Worth. Dine-in catering or drive through 2900 Montgomery just off I-30. Remember, the best barbecue in Fort Worth is at Railhead Smokehouse. Welcome back inside the Flying Tea Club studio. I'm Chase Curtis. Our TCU women's basketball team continues to set TCU history with a 10 and 0 record. Just really excited about the overall performance tonight. Um, Bench was awesome for us. Obviously, we didn't have Sedona tonight, and so it was an opportunity uh, for a lot of the different players to step up. Um, and we had great contributions across the board. Vic um, did a heck of a job off the bench. That's the most minutes she's played this season. And, and Deja, um, incredible what she did tonight. She played 22 minutes um, all season a year ago. She comes out, plays 33 minutes, and grabs 14 rebounds. So just really happy and proud of those two kids. And then you got Aaliyah Roberson, who has a double-double. And so we had great balance today. It's one of those nights Madison couldn't quite get it going, um, but we had enough contributions from everybody else to get it done. So really happy and proud of the group. You know, once the season gets going, you got your head down and um, you're working on the scouting report for the upcoming game and uh, doing your practice planning and um, – Obviously, navigating the journey of a season with injuries and different things that come. Um, tonight, we didn't have Sedona, and so we we had uh, we added a couple different things in regards to playing small ball with the Lee at the five. And so, yeah, you don't really get a chance to enjoy it. It just keeps going. And um, so I'm thankful that we kind of get this week um, to regroup and uh, get our bumps and bruises taken care of. As uh, the season is unfolding, we're 10 games in, so you're about a third of the way into the season, but you're a third of the way through practices. You're a third of the way through understanding scouting reports. And so these freshmen and some of these young kids, you're finally able to start turning them loose a little bit because they understand what's expected. And uh, there's a great group of leaders that have set the tone for our team this year and, and how we do things. And everybody else is getting caught up to speed. And I think you saw Vic and Deja out there really performing at a high level tonight. Madison Connor now owns the NCAA record for most three-pointers in a 10-game span to start a season. It's, it's incredible what Madison's done. And uh, you lose sight of this is really her first time in college basketball having this opportunity. And so uh, this is new for her. And, um, but the kid's work ethic, her absolute laser focus um, is special. The great ones have it um, where they are so locked on. When Madison steps between the lines every time, like today, she, she didn't shoot it well, but she is locked in. And she is bringing it every night. And um, she's done that for 10 straight games. I mean, put that into perspective for a kid that's just having uh, this role for the first time in her career. Um, she's still just figuring things out. She's still learning how defenses want to guard her and how to, how to play off that. The team has their next game on December 17th. Good luck, ladies. Meanwhile, two TCU volleyball players were just named to the AVCA All-Southwest Region first team. Jalen Gibson and Melanie Parra are the 13th and 14th players in program history to earn AVCA All-Region accolades. Para also just got selected to the AVCA All-American team. Great job, ladies. You deserve it. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
you know, we wouldn't be able to do the things we were able to do this year without the Flying T Club. So we got to continue to, to get people involved. It's it's more important right now than it's ever been. Flying T is special. It's 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 the best thing that I've encountered in college. It allows us to be able to offset a lot of the costs that our scholarships aren't able to cover. If people like winning, invest in in, in the Flying T Club and NIL. Uh, it's almost a necessity now in uh, the college football world. I mean, you got to kind of invest uh, in the programs and what you put in is what you get out. Our men's basketball team is on a roll this season with a 7-1 record. After the recent upset to Clemson, they're hungry to win again. Uh, you know, we're really excited. I mean, um, you know, obviously coming off a loss, you know, it's uh, it kind of boils your blood a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So we're really excited, and especially after last year and, you know, that kind of little rivalry we had, I guess, for him, from hitting that game winner. Um, it's going to be exciting. And, um, you know, I think this is uh, the turning point where we'll start to go in a positive direction from last game. And, um, you know, I'm just excited about that. Uh, they were better. They were older. They were tougher. And uh, we uh, that's going to make us better going forward here. So. Um, and then now we get ready for Arizona State, who obviously we have a history with, playing last year in the NSA tournament. And um, great opportunity. I thought it was great that we could schedule them and, and uh, get them back here based on uh, such a great game last year in the NSA tournament on the big stage uh, where everybody was watching. So, um, yeah, we got to play better. Um, I mean, every game from this point on is important. You know, uh, the most important thing is to take take it game by game. You know, obviously we know we got a tough schedule ahead of us, and that's what we you know prepare for. That's what we're used to. Um, so taking each game um, and really paying attention to the things that we need to do to to help us win, and uh, also just focus um, intently on you know details and uh, making sure that we're playing for each other. And, and making sure that we're focusing on the bigger goal ahead and going into the to the 12. If we can do all those things, that is, is what ultimately is going to lead us to winning and hopefully bring us a championship, not only in the Big 12, but in the national championship as well. So, you know, that's all I'm focused on. That's all we're focused on. And uh, we talked about it, and now it's just time to go do it. To play against a good defensive team, you got to have the ability to grind it out. So we have cut down our turnovers as we've gone on, so there was progress there. Uh, but really our shot selection and our patience um, uh, on it and uh, in the half court. You know, transition obviously elite, uh, efficiency good, uh, decision making better in, the ha in, the, in transition than half court. But that's on me. We worked so much on transition in the summer. Um, again, half court we've worked on it immensely. But, you know, we had situations where, to be honest, our, our guards, uh, you know, Jameer wasn't there all summer. Uh, Avery was out most of the fall. And those are your two point guards. So we had guys playing different spots a lot. Um, I thought we've, since we've got to the games, um, uh, that would be enough time, but it's, it, for whatever reason, it hasn't been. Should have been, but it isn't. And so uh, I, I think those are the main things. Uh, uh, I would say uh, changing sides, reversing the basketball in the half court is probably a, a big component that we've got to uh, uh, get better at uh, against uh, better defensive teams. We were able to score on, um, uh, on the initial side uh, earlier in the year. We weren't able against that team. The guys play Arizona State tomorrow night at the Dickies Arena. Good luck, fellas. Before we go, make sure to stay tuned for the next week's episode where the TCU men's basketball team takes on Frogs Today from Hawaii. It's been a blast hosting this week's episode of Frogs Today. For everyone behind the scenes here at Rockstone Media House, I'm Josh Hoover. And I'm Chase Curtis. Thanks for watching this week's show, and thank you for always supporting our football program. Please like and subscribe to Frogs Today for the best coverage of TCU athletics. Until next week, go, go Frogs! Frogs. Roxo Media House.